What's going on you guys welcome back to the channel and in this YouTube series we're going to be taking a look at how to build this four function calculator in Python using uh, tkinter for your graphical user interfaces. So let's get into it. Okay so the idea when you're building an app in uh, kinter is that is a module inside of Python. So it's just a package that comes uh, pre-built. You have to import it at the beginning of your function, but that's gonna give you a lot of tools to actually display uh, a graphical user interface for all of your code. So you start by importing it, call your uh, root screen something. I always call it root. Um, and then kind of just the bare minimum to get something opening, uh, you go down to the bottom and you do root dot main loop. And uh, I, I like to set a title as well. Otherwise, the title will just say TK. But um, I do it like this, root.title. And then for this one, it's calculator. And let's take a look. Unless I'm mistaken, that's all we need to enter just to get it uh, up and running. So yeah, you can see uh, we get this window. It's resizable. It's kind of in its default size when it opens up there. Uh, our title of calculator is on there but it's not doing anything yet. We don't have anything on it. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Um, so I have this snip here of what the calculator is gonna look like. It's essentially five rows, right, and four columns. And remember the numbering starts at zero for programming. So it goes zero, one, two, three, and then zero, one, two, three, four for the rows. And that's really important that we kind of have the grid pictured there because um, the tkinter like way that you define where a widget goes is a grid system so uh, with that in mind let's start drawing our buttons um, the way you create a button is so let's say define our buttons um, it, it's a pretty standard GUI practice actually you cr define the the widgets in one spot and then you draw them onto the screen in a second spot and that's the same with tkinter it's the same with kivi it's actually the same with pygame as well so for the buttons we're just going to start in the top left corner so you'll remember from our screenshot i'll click back here occasionally that's going to be the seven button and so seven button equals and then capital b button that's how you call the uh, tkinter or kinter um, button format and we're just going to put on the root and we're going to give it a text of seven for now and that's all we'll do per button so we've obviously got uh, you know one two three four eight twelve sixteen seventeen buttons and a label real quick so i'll go ahead and um copy paste and kind of fly through doing that same thing um, i do think and we'll kind of see why when we get to the second part here um, but I think doing it in an order that's kind of seven, eight, nine, division, four, five, six, multiplication, one, two, three, subtraction is going to be what we want to do um, because, so we'll call it divide button, um, because when we copy it into the next section, that's where we're actually going to be giving it grid coordinates. And um, that is, uh, it's just a lot easier to see right away, like what you have in each row and column if they're all de uh, defined in more or less the same location. All right, so four, five, six, let's get our multiplication button. Um, oop, <laughs> multiply. And let's spell it right. Okay, and then we need all these again, actually. So now four, five, six, we've got one, two, three, what else? Uh, we've got subtraction in that spot. And then underneath it, we've got zero. I think we had decimal. Then we had the equal sign, and then we had the plus. Um, if you're following along and you want to build this in your own way, you can certainly play around with the um, what buttons you put where. You know, that's actually great practice as an exercise for yourself is just... Um, say well i don't want subtraction above addition so i'll flip those um, or, or play around with the layout any way you want that's great practice um, for me i did it uh, just fairly similar to what the little calculator widget that pops up if you hit the calc button on your laptop that's kind of the format i went for just so you guys know where i'm coming from 
But uh, okay, so then uh, we're now into, so I'll go ahead and do the clear button because um, that's still CLR. But uh, we, we do need to do something different for the output, right? The, the actual spot that um, the numbers are gonna appear and then the answer. Uh, we're gonna call that a label. So that's output label equals label and then you still put on the root and you still give it a text um, but since this label is something that we want to be uh, having change every time you click a button um, you're actually not going to define static text you're going to use something different called string uh, text variable and we will um, we will give it a variable that we have to go and make called output string and then uh, you noticed we have it as black and the default button color is this kind of gray so after this we go over here and we do uh, BG which is black background and then we define black right there and then um, we want the text because the text defaults to black and that's the foreground or FG we'll have that be white so that'll really pop and now we need to come up here and define the output uh, string and there's something special you have to do in tkinter when you're defining a string variable that's gonna be updating inside of a label constantly. Um, you create this variable and you call it a string var just like that. And then after that, you're actually not gonna do the like standard Python method of saying output string equals whatever. You use this output string dot set. And uh, so for now, we'll just throw default in there so it'll appear. But uh, okay, so we defined seven, eight, nine division, four, five, six multiplication, one, two, three subtraction, zero decimal point equals plus, and then our label, and then our clear button, and that should be uh, great for the next section now. So let's go ahead and grab this whole define button section, and now we are going to actually draw onto grid. So we'll say draw buttons onto grid comments are a great way to uh, to keep your code organized and clean and so now we with the name of whatever you named the button if you didn't name it exactly like I did here that's fine but just make sure whatever you did name your button you do button name dot grid and then in here we're gonna give it two variables we're gonna give it row equals and these actually don't need to be strings row equals zero column equals zero okay and now I'm gonna copy this dot grid. This can be a lot faster than typing it everywhere. And now you'll also see why it was really easy to put them in this order, because as I go through, I can just tweak it a little bit. Um, you know, zero, one, two, three, it's really easy to keep track of. And then for the four button, we're on to row one, and then column zero. And we're just gonna go zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three. And once we get to, if you're thinking ahead a little bit to the output label, um, you probably noticed it, it does stretch across three um, columns. So if you're unfamiliar with, sorry, I'm trying to kind of get ahead of myself with the tutorial here. But if you're unfamiliar with Kinter and you haven't seen the column span function before, then um, that'll, be, that'll be a great uh, little intro for you. Um, because there's a function called column span that l allows you to set a widget. Um, you define where it starts, but then you also say how many columns you want to stretch across. Alrighty, almost there. Row three, column two, and row three, column three. Okay, and now let's go ahead and just uh, do the clear button while we're here. That's gonna be row four, column three, and then the output label is going to be row four, and we're gonna put it in column zero. That's where we want to start, but we use this other variable, column span, and we want to stretch across three columns, right? So look, it starts at zero, but then it stretches one and two. Okay, so I believe we've done everything we need for all the buttons we want in our calculator to be on the screen just with these two sections. We defined them, and then we said where they're uh, getting drawn onto. We haven't done the functional piece of it yet, um, but we have defined them all. So let's go ahead and run this. And what you'll see is the stretching. Oh, I s it looks like we put, 
we yeah yeah we did we left the output label in row three let's put it in row four okay and what you're gonna see is it's just this very strange format it doesn't resize when you uh, widen it or anything and every widget is as small as it can possibly be and it doesn't stretch to fill the space so the last thing we'll do in this video now we're gonna format each of these so that it does stretch to fill the space and um, there's one little weird thing you have to do before you can um, stretch those buttons you have to give each button what's called weight and it's just kind of a it's kind of a kinter um, it's kind of a kinter unique thing is is before you can uh, before you can say all right I want this row to stretch I want this column to stretch I want this widget to fill the space you just have to go in here and do a function that's called grid dot configure sorry it's column configure and row configure so both of these need to get done but you'll see I put it in a for loop because we would have to do this for every row and column um, we would have to say for row one we want to give it some weight and essentially the default weight is zero and what I'm doing here is I'm just giving them a weight of one I don't actually know what doing like a decimal would do it would probably make everything uh, like proportionate but I've always found it's easiest to just give them a weight of one and um, now just looking at this I did it this way because uh, I did this way because we have zero through three on both of them and that's what this will do but we also have row four so I'm just gonna come down it's a little janky and you could just tweak your you could tweak your loop to catch uh, row four as well but I'm gonna leave it here and say um, this so this for loop is giving weight to all of our columns in row zero through three and then this additional row is just giving weight to uh, row four <clears throat> and I'll show why I did that in a second but what we really want to do now is we go into the uh, grid definition and there's one more thing we're going to do and that's called sticky and you're essentially you have the four cardinal directions northeast south and west and um, you have the actually it's lowercase um, but uh, you're saying whatever you put in that spot you want it to either stretch to the left, stretch to the right, stretch up or stretch down to fill the available space inside of its widget. And so since we want every widget, um, the way the calculator works, it really fills the screen widget to widget. So we are gonna do sticky in all four directions for every widget. Now let's go ahead and run that. And you'll see immediately it resizes to fill the screen. It looks great. Um, none of the buttons do anything yet because we haven't given them command functions but we're working on getting it drawn on the screen so far and you can see just with that sticky command um, it resizes really well now let's go ahead and look at why you need to define weight for each thing I'm gonna comment out row 4 real quick so you'll see what happens when you don't give row 4 weight actually it's, I, so you see it's not the same size as the rest of them um, so that's okay you can play around with the weighting if you want but if you want all of your buttons all of your widgets to have the approximately same height and width then it's important to uh, give them all weight you can see the clear button now is um, is uh, the same height as the rest of the buttons the label box is the same height and when we didn't have weight on that uh, row 4 there it was just the minimum size it needed to be for the text to fit but it didn't get any bigger than that as we resized our screen. So there are applications where you'll want just one row of widgets that don't resize. But for now, we're going to uh, keep it that way. And we just drew the entire uh, application that we'll be using in one video in 15 minutes. So great job. Hopefully you found this useful and informative. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe and check out the channel for more content. And um, if you have any questions about what you saw here today or anything you want to see in the future, just be sure to let me know about in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And uh, tomorrow we'll go ahead and take a look at actually adding the functionality to each of these buttons and operators to actually make this a functioning calculator. So I hope you found this useful and uh, as always, good luck with your code and thanks for watching. Thanks.